Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we got some fuel parts in, we got some lines in, pickup tube, all that stuff. There's a lot of plumbing that's got to go on in this Humvee on the Duramax swap here. So let's just get to it. Get some of that stuff ran, get it going where it needs to go, cut the lines, all that stuff, because it's going to take some time to get those steel braided lines cut and done. So let's just go to work, guys. Let's go. All right, guys, what I'm doing right now, I got to move a bunch of stuff out of the way because I am going to redo the fuel lines and how they run and everything. The return on the engine side over here on the driver's side, it's going to have to stay where it's at because there's a couple hard angles that come off of it. So that'll stay. I'm going to try to move the high pressure line, the inlet, and move it over here, kind of where it comes off the CP3. We'll see. But uh, let me get some of this stuff out of the way and just go from there. So guys, fast system is next on the list for the Humvee because that can't work. Then we gotta have a fuel pump and we gotta have stuff like that that's gonna be have positive pressure up here to the CP3. So all this stuff's going, which is fine. I can use it on my truck, of course. But routing these wires, it is uh, wires, all the lines, the fuel lines and stuff like that, incorporating the cooler in there. It's boggled my brain a little bit, and I'm kind of way over thinking it, but it's really not that bad. So in the end here, I'll give you guys a full rundown on how these fuel lines actually run, where they go, and how they get there. All right, so here's my new pickup tube. Got this on Amazon, and the tube is a cut-to-link tube, so I know I'm going to have to trim this down. I mean, it's just a piece of plastic. So 
this thing's gonna be good. I got a lot of grinding to do on the actual plate because there was a plate I'll show you here in a second where the old pickup tube went through. Actually, it was a vent line that came up. So I'm gonna grind all that off because it's kind of already a decent sized hole. Probably have to use my step bit to get this thing to fit because there's just a, uh, you gotta put this down through there. There's a lock washer, a lock nut on there. And that's that, pretty easy. Uh, I'm gonna have to get the fast system. It's gonna be coming here real soon. And once that gets in place, finish up some wiring here and hopefully we can start this thing. All right, so here's where they measure the, how much fuel you got in the tank. But right here is the vent line and underneath it, it's got a pretty good weld all the way around it. We're gonna end up having to grind all of that off. I don't know if every Humvee is like this on the tank, but boom, grind, 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 grind all that off. We don't need this anymore. And we're gonna end up using the bigger fitting there to get drop down through there. So this hole is gonna have to be widened quite a bit but it's a lot better than starting with a hole this size and starting with a hole this size. And this seems to be, see the box down in there, right? It seems to be perfectly in line. If you can see down in there, it's still inside the box at the bottom. So it's gonna be perfect. It's kind of a good middle of the road spot. I wanna put it way over here on the edge and then have it just sitting down there. It might not get all the fuel. There might be some fuel left over in the bottom of the tank. So that's what I'm trying to prevent there. So hopefully we can get this thing as level as it can be. Mind up having to mount the, the fuel tank itself back up onto the Humvee body. Okay guys, so here is the pickup tube, the main port right here. So it really doesn't, here's the inner diameter of the hole. It doesn't have to be that much more, but it's definitely going to be more. So let's just go ahead and get the grinding right here. Get this piece out of there. Let's go. All right, boom, it's off. It is off. Got a nice, clean, decent surface. Let's go, start drilling. This right here is for the transmission cooler. It comes with the relay right here. Well, I bought it separate, but it kind of goes with it. But this tab on top cannot go. I mean, these are nice if you're just gonna mount it like that, but uh, I'm gonna keep it in the box. So the box that came with when I sent the PCM off and all that stuff off to get reprogrammed and everything, 
They made this harness and I do got a couple extra spaces for relays. So this is gonna be one of them. I'm just gonna drop it right in this one, but also cut this little tab off the top. There we go, cut off. Let's see. Drop that in there like that. Uh, I'm going to pull this off right here. Yep, they got to go in there individually. Okay, so let's get this pickup tube installed right here. Now, remember this is cut to fit. That's on the bottom, look how much it's sticking up. So what I'm gonna do, put this on here and then just keep cutting some off slowly until it seats down perfectly. And also what I'm gonna do, put something on the bottom there where it can kind of mark where it's going. Um, maybe a piece of cardboard or something. Let me go grab something and put it on the bottom to kind of give me that one eighth maybe gap to where this isn't sitting directly on the bottom where it's not picking up any fuel. So it needs to be like that, barely off of it, maybe an eighth of an inch. That way there's still a little bit in the tank and I need it low enough to where we don't have like several gallons in here that's unused. So guys, I got it. It fits absolutely beautiful. Should have used this from the get-go just so it would get a nice even cut, the pipe cutter. So I've got my foam down there and it's practically an eighth, eighth of an inch thick. So if I put that back down in, it sits, I mean, ever so slightly on top of it. You can kind of see it bobbling. Now, take that out. It sits completely flush, no wiggling. And let me see if you guys can see down through this hole. It's perfect. About an eighth of an inch give. Check it out. Don't know if it's gonna focus down in there. See it wiggling? Just enough down there. It's not gonna focus, but you guys get the picture. Nice.
Okay, so the return is done. Let's go ahead and start all the way over here. So here's the return. Um, fitting here, U, it goes all the way back around. It goes all the way back to the side of the engine. So I got rid of that hard line that was there. So hard side, of, you know, this is the return. Top of the cooler, gravity down, back out. And this is the return all the way back to the top of the tank. So the return section of the D-Max is complete. Here's my setup. See a donor truck. Keeping the wheels though. It was going back for sale. Everything else is gone but the frame. Practically in the rear suspension. Ended up using the winch. Thanks girls. Really appreciate it. Boom. Didn't want to film all that, but we were able to jack up the front enough. I had to unhook this, jack, pretty much raise the trailer as high as I could, put on that 12,000 pound Smitty built winch, and voila. Once I got the front jacked up, we put the little wheel dollies under it. Easy as pie. Time to go get some scrap metal money. Next day, I went to Lowe's and got two different bars, 5 16 and quarter, maybe? All right, so what's gonna happen, in here where this tees off in the main fuel in. We're gonna go ahead and cut this tube. This is just a, what is this? This is a, this is a 5 16 tube. So it has to reduce down to right here where these go start going to the injectors right here, to this hose. So this barb is gonna fit this hose. This barb is gonna fit the larger hose, the 5 16 hose. So let's just measure over here, cut this, and then uh, get it installed. So I did just get back from taking the frame to the salvage yard and I got 91 bucks for it. It was just pretty much the frame, one wire and harness, some front suspension, complete rear suspension and the rear end. So whatever, I needed it gone. I needed it out of the yard. So they took it, $91 richer. So I went ahead and ordered one of these fittings for like a breather valve. This is a MPT fitting for AN fittings. So here's a bolt, it's a metric bolt. I went to Lowe's, got this and a nut here. So I gotta grind this off. So, I mean, it's just way too long. So it'll be my plug for this. So let's get to it. This is gonna be the breather. So when you prime the fuel system, you can crack this valve, and let out some of that air. And as usual, when you grind off a bolt, you want to put a nut on the end of it so you can get the threads all nice. guys that's gonna be a wrap for today's video hey just ran out of time on this one we got the return done it's really good i've got a couple more things i've ordered a lot more fittings and then more hose line to run the rest of these coolers you just got to stick around and check that out for yourself i'm really glad i got that donor truck out of here my wife's been begging me to get that thing out of here for a while so hey stick around hit the bell hit the notifications see you guys next time take it easy